What's up guys, my name is Brandon and iOS 14 is gonna be here before we know it. We're coming up on just three months away from seeing the unveil on the first beta of Apple's highly anticipated new software release. So in this video, I wanted to cover some of the more recent iOS 14 and iPhone 9 rumors, along with an update on a potential March event from Apple. So let's first discuss something that has recently been making its rounds over on social media, and that is, well, this. This is apparently a screen recording from someone with access to an iOS 14 internal build running on their iPhone 11 Pro Max. And in this video, you could see a revamped multitasking view similar to iPadOS, and this could potentially be coming to the iPhone with iOS 14. Now, a lot of people did think that this was just a jailbreak tweak and that this was just fake just for attention, but the source did say that this is not the case, basically saying that this is actually a device running an early version of the iOS 14.0 internal build. And of course there are screenshots to kind of back that claim up. But still, I would definitely take all of this with a grain of salt because this just really isn't Apple-like to have a leak like this. And these videos and screenshots, we've seen it before. They can easily be manipulated. This could very easily be like iOS 13. I know that you know people that work with Apple that have access to these internal builds have had something similar to this type of multitasking view on the iPhone for a while now, at least iOS 13. So it could still be an iOS 13 device. You know, it could be just manipulated to look like iOS 14. But regardless of whether or not it's real or fake, is this something you want to see on the iPhones in iOS 14, or are you just fine with the current multitasking view in iOS 13? I'm personally neither here nor there on this feature. I mean, it's something we've really seen before. It's on iPadOS, so it's not really like a brand new feature, uh, but I don't know. I, I like the current multitasking view on iOS right now, like we have in iOS 13. I don't see anything wrong with it. And I mean, if the screens get bigger, I guess I could see something like this working. But I don't know, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Now, when this alleged leak was making its round, I saw a lot of people also getting upset that there was no major design overhaul, no major redesign on the springboard when they saw this video, you know, because you can see the home screen for a split second when, you know, he's going through the multitasking and everything like that. So a lot of people were wanting to see, I guess, a big design overhaul with iOS 14, and I'm confused as to why. There was really never an indication that Apple would be redesigning the OS in 2020. iOS 14 will once again be putting stability at the forefront to prevent another iOS 13-like release with tons of bugs, because as you guys know, iOS 13 had the most releases in history for iOS in terms of betas and like actual point releases and things like that. It was very, very buggy. It came with a lot of features, but it was buggy. So if we were to see any type of major design overhaul or design change, like the icons and everything like that, and what you can do with the home screen, I would not expect that until at least iOS 15 or 16, if that early. I think iOS 14, once again, is gonna be putting stability at the forefront. So now let's shift over to a report from a more historically accurate source, Mark Gurman and Bloomberg. So he just recently published a report titled, Apple Ways Letting Users Switch Default iPhone Apps to Rivals. And in this, he describes how Apple is, quote, discussing whether to let users choose third-party web browser and mail applications as their default options. So basically, if you got tired of the mail bugs, like pretty much most of us have these days with iOS 13, you can not only download another email client, like say Spark, as you see up there, another great email client, but you can also set that as your default app as well. And it's the same with Safari. So if you have Safari right here, but maybe you prefer, you know, Google Chrome, you can have that set as the default. So if you're in an email or somewhere where you're presented with a link, when you click on that link, it's gonna take you straight to Google Chrome instead of going into Safari by default when you click on that link. So that will be nice. I know a lot of people have been wanting this for years now, and this is something you can pretty much do everywhere. I mean, you can do this on any computer, including you know Mac OS, you can do this on Android devices, but for some reason, Apple never lets you do this with iOS. Now, German also mentions how Apple is also considering allowing Spotify to play directly on the HomePod and not just be limited to Apple Music. Now, that would be huge for not only HomePod users, but also for HomePod sales, because not everyone has or wants Apple Music, especially those with the Android devices and Samsung phones and things like that they're not gonna want Apple Music. They're not gonna pay 10 bucks a month for Apple Music, you know, when they're like diehard Spotify fans. So it's gonna be big if Apple, with the next major HomePod release, allows you to play Spotify directly on 
the HomePod and not just restrict you to Apple Music and only Apple Music. So while it's great that Apple is considering this for two of their default apps, Safari and Mail, I really wish that this was just an option for any application, similar to what you can do, like I said, on a computer. And I'm sure I'm not alone on this. You know, I want something like Waze as my default Maps application. This is probably my biggest complaint, uh, you know, when it comes to default applications. I use Waze more than I use any other you know, application when it comes to GPS and things like that. I have not even opened the Maps application on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, and I don't even think my last phone either. It's been years since I've used the actual default Apple Maps application. Now, once again, this is a report indicating that Apple is considering it. It's not been confirmed just yet, and we're still three months out from the first beta, but still, it's great to hear that Apple is at least considering the possibility of this. Now, in terms of supported devices for iOS 14, you guys might recall that I made a video on this a couple of months ago, and in that video, I predicted that Apple would support all iPhones that were currently supported with iOS 13. And at the time of making that video, I believe I was the only person who predicted this and it was all based on history and my own personal research. Well, just a couple weeks after I published that video, we got a rumor or a report from a French site named iPhone Soft, basically saying exactly what I said in that video. And these guys, they've done this before. They've done these little prediction posts before with mixed results. So with iOS 12, they were correct in predicting that the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 6 would be supported on iOS 12. But last year, they said the iOS 13 would drop support for the iPhone SE, but obviously that turned out to not be true. And now we're going on iOS 14 and we're expected to see support for the iPhone SE with iOS 14. So they've been right and they've been wrong in the past, but I thought it was just kind of funny that they reported on that soon after I made that video. But the reality is nobody knows for sure what devices will be supported. So if you wanna see more research backed predictions, then watch my video on this subject if you haven't already. I will leave that linked up in the cards up above. Now as for the release date of iOS 14 beta one, of course that will be on WWDC 2020, which is usually in June. So in early June is when we can expect to see that. Of course, we do not know any confirmed dates just yet. We haven't seen invites go out. Invites usually go out like on the last week of May right here. So we won't know for sure until May. So we're still a ways away from that, but we can expect it you know, sometime within the first two weeks of June. Now, as for a March Apple event, this continues to become more and more likely as the days go on. So we got a report from German blog iPhone ticker recently that claimed that the keynote will be held on March 31st. So that is on a Tuesday and that the upcoming iPhone 9 or iPhone SE 2, whatever it's going to be called, will be released a couple days later on the 3rd of April. So just three days after the announcement on that Friday. Now we know that that budget friendly iPhone is coming this year, but with the unfortunate events that are going on in China right now, the factories are definitely working at a much slower pace. So there's always the possibility of delays in manufacturing, which would mean delays in getting our hands on that iPhone 9 or iPhone SE 2. So I will continue to update you guys to see what's gonna go on. Of course, that could impact the whole March event as well. So we'll see because that will definitely be the flagship you know, product announced at that event. So we'll see, and I will definitely keep you guys updated. I will also make a full detailed video about what to expect at the March event, but only once it gets confirmed. I don't wanna make a lot of predictions videos. I kinda of wanna give you guys a lot more factual base or you know, stuff with some substance behind it. So I will make a video on what to expect at the March event come the time when it's actually confirmed. And I will also make a full in-depth video on the iPhone 9 or the iPhone SE 2 later this week, just basically taking all the rumors and you know a lot of my predictions into account for that video. So definitely stay tuned for that. Now, lastly, I did want to also discuss another social media rumor about the upcoming iPhone 9 or iPhone SE 2 and the alleged over-ear Apple headphones. So apparently, some Target employees, yes, the Target retail store employees, have started discovering unreleased Apple products in the Target system, along with SKUs to go along with them. Now, as you can see right here, one says Apple AirPods X generation, and it has a price of $399. So obviously this is not gonna be just like typical AirPods or AirPods Pro at that price. So it could be the over-ear headphones. You can see another one here says Apple iPod Touch X generation for also $399, which could be the iPhone 9 or iPhone SE 2, could just have like a placeholder name there. And then we also saw placeholder listings for like the new Apple Watch bands and a new Apple TV, new iPad Pro, things like that. And while this may seem exciting, 
It's not necessarily real. So you can see here, Mark Gurman said this on Twitter. I don't believe Apple informs Target of upcoming launches at all or in this sort of detail. Take this as an employee inserted these SKUs on their own speculation. And yeah, I'd have to agree with this here, especially given that there have been no FCC filings as of yet for any of these devices that are allegedly in the Target system. So don't get your hopes up too much with these Target leaks. I think these are products that are coming sometime this year, but this specific leak should be taken with a big grain of salt. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little rundown of the latest leaks and rumors regarding Apple and iOS 14 and the iPhone 9. Like I said, I will have a much more in-depth video coming soon this week on the iPhone 9 or the iPhone SE 2. And I will also have another one on the March Apple event once we get actual confirmation that it's happening. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think about everything I talked about in this video, specifically iOS 14. What are you expecting? What are you wanting to see out of iOS 14? Do you think we're gonna be able to set default apps for like the maps right here? Or do you think it's gonna be just for mail and Safari at first? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. I love having discussions with you guys, especially when it comes to rumors and leaks and things like that. It's kind of cool to see and go back to look at who was right and who predicted things correctly. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.